Wouldn't it be nice to have several thought leaders in your industry know and love your brand? Start a podcast. Invite your industry's thought leaders to be guests on your show and start reaping the benefits of having a network full of industry influencers. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to the B2B Growth Show, a podcast dedicated to helping B2B executives achieve explosive growth. Whether you're looking for techniques and strategies or tools and resources, you've come to the right place. I'm Jonathan Green. And I'm James Carberry. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. We are here today with Chuki Obio. He is an executive advisor at LinkedIn. Chuki, how are you doing today? I am doing well, James. Uh, so, uh, so Chuki, I'm really excited to, uh, to, to finally get connected with you. We've been talking for a couple months now and stoked to finally get you on the show. Before we dive into you know, what we're going to be talking about today, which is the anatomy of a great LinkedIn profile, you've got five really cool tips that you're going to share uh, to really optimize your LinkedIn profile in a powerful way. Before we get into that, could you explain to the folks listening just a little bit about your role at LinkedIn and, and, uh, and what you're up to over there? Yeah, it's uh, kind of an exciting role here at LinkedIn. Uh, just a bit about my background. Uh, got experience in corporate law, and I came into sales and marketing at LinkedIn really by uh, way of management consultant. So what I do here is I work with executives to really learn how they grow their business. And then once I understand that growth strategy connected to uh, a solution that we have here called the sales navigator solution, okay. which helps executives and their sales and marketing functions do three things. First, identify the right decision makers. Second, engage directly with those decision makers. And then third, track their business development results. Got it. I love it. So, so Chiki, we're, we're going to get into these five, uh, five specific ways that you can uh, optimize your LinkedIn profile so that you really can get results. But the people using LinkedIn as more of a resume versus, you know, the, the marketer listening to this who wants to use it to more project you know, what their brand is all about. Can you, can you talk a little bit about the kind of traditional way of looking at LinkedIn as like a resume versus how they should be looking at it? Absolutely. So certainly, James, and you touched on this, the traditional way of looking at LinkedIn is as an online resume where you put in your job experience. And that's great, right? That allows you, if you are an active job seeker, to at least present some of your experience points. Uh, one of the interesting trends that we found across the last few years are that when you position LinkedIn as your platform to tell your professional success story, you can drive value in not just a job-seeking way, but you can drive value in a business development way. You can drive value in a brand management way. Uh, Got really a couple of different ways that you can really pull some value levers. And it's been interesting working with uh, thought-leading sales and marketing executives to position LinkedIn as that platform to tell their professional success story personally and then to do it for the broader organization. I love it. Uh, so this first thing that, that we're going to talk about is around uh, the photo, you know, having a professional photo that you upload. You know, this, this seems like a no-brainer, but I would imagine, you know, especially in the role that you're in, you see people botching this a lot. Talk to us about why uh, having that professional photo is so important. Yeah, it was interesting. So uh, a few weeks ago, this is actually timely, was uh, talking with uh, a director of marketing who had an alligator as his LinkedIn profile <laughs> photo, right? And yeah, my very first question was, you know, how uh, did you make this decision? You've got to talk me through this. And he was just like, well, you know, you know, love alligator hunting and, you know, like alligators. Uh, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> What does that specifically have to do with your responsibilities, uh, you know, really leading a, a marketing organization? And I really didn't have a good answer, right? So when you think of your ability to tell your professional success story, I think it starts with a, a powerful photo. Mm. How do you make that photo powerful? You've got to make it professional. Because again, you, know, you are engaging with professionals. Uh, this is how we go from RFPs to sign contracts. And when you think of your professional photo, uh, don't overthink it. So to the extent that, you know, you can take a photo while you are in the office or in a conference room or really at a conference, uh, these photos resonate really well. And then they, they get the gears sort of 
turning around how prospects, how potential leads engage with your profile. Mm. And last thing that I'll just say here, it's uh, again, we hear it all the time. A picture is worth a thousand words. And as B2B marketers, pictures are a very powerful way that we can tell our story yep. without using too many words. So again, tip one here is uh, really having a, a nice professional photo and really getting some feedback from others to ensure that it meets a certain level of professionalism. Love it. Okay, so the second uh, the second tip, Chuki, is around uh, your headline. You really you you want people to write a really compelling headline. So this is this is the the blurb of text that's kind of right next to their headshot. Is that correct? That is correct. And so, what goes right. into a compelling headline? Absolutely. So you have to use an action verb. What's an action verb? So. Basic practice would be just to put in your role. So if uh, you are a director of marketing, just put in director of marketing. That's fine. Now, an action verb would be, I transform marketing departments. That's using a, an action verb around transformation to really drive your value. Uh, another action verb that really works very well, uh, James, is the idea of change management. Okay. So somehow expressing that you are a change agent um, plays very well. Uh, this ensures that you maintain a level of thought leadership uh, and uh, in really communicating the, the the work that you do. And then the last thing to just you know fairly basic is you know, using the word help. Uh, the word help. So the ability to just uh, describe how you help, whether you know it's help helping your leaders that you work with internally or how you help. Uh, others outside of the company to really you know, ensure that you're communicating the right message, the right brand uh, for your organization. So do you have any particular advice, Chuki, on whether you know this headline, whether it should communicate the value that you as the marketer add to your organization, or should it communicate the value that your product or service adds to the market? Yeah, it really depends on where you are in your marketing life cycle. So if you are a new organization and there's a lot of effort around, frankly, just establishing the brand, um, I would communicate your impact to external stakeholders. If the brand's already established and, you know, for example, you need to just communicate the fact that, you know, you're maintaining that brand affinity, that brand loyalty, then I would communicate how your role helps internal stakeholders. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. So, uh, so this third tip, Chuki, is around media and really sharing rich media on your profile. Talk to us about this. Yeah, this one's interesting, all right? And, you know, James, if you think of uh, what you do, what other B2B marketing leaders do, uh, really generating content, I think, when you think of the different types of contents that we generate, uh, whether these are PowerPoint slides, whether, uh, you know, we're talking of, you know, like podcasts, uh, webinars, the ability to capture that information and present it in your LinkedIn profile gives your profile visitors a different way to interact with, frankly, your experience, mm. right? Uh, in many ways, you're making a presentation when you're not in the room because they're interacting with, whether it's a video interview, whether it's a uh, you know, presentation that you put together. Uh, in addition to that, these uh, rich media pieces uh, help you pull together some SEO uh, momentum, um, so folks can, you know, certainly, for example, in a YouTube video that's got a, a tagline and some meta tags, um, that allows you to really optimize those uh, and show up in some of these search results as part of your LinkedIn profile. Got it. Okay. So this this fourth one, Chuki, uh, is telling your professional story. Uh, talk to us about what that means. Yeah, it's interesting. So, you know, with every LinkedIn profile, there's the ability to go in and really sort of describe um, or, you know, pull some sentences together around your career path, you know, so you could say, Hey, look, you know, went from uh, a student of marketing to now a leader in marketing and, you know, was very interested in ad agency work. And then I leveraged that into uh, some other path, the ability to sort of tell that story. Now, when you think of a story and you deconstruct uh, a story, it's really cause and effect. So one of the things that you want to have is a punchline in telling your professional stories, what caused you to go a certain path? And then what's been the effect of that, uh, both affecting you personally, professionally, as well as, frankly, the impact that you've had on stakeholders. And stakeholders could certainly include clients. Mm. So if I were to break it out into different pieces, it's sort of past, present, and future. 
And the, the run-in thread there would be cause and effect. So, and, and where exactly are you telling that story? Is that kind of in the, the about section right under your headline and, 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 uh, and headshot? Yes. Okay. So, uh, so this last one, Chuki, that we're going to talk about is your contact information. Uh, you know, I, you know, I've seen people go back and forth on whether or not they want to, they want to share this. Talk to us about why you think, uh, why you think it's necessary. Yeah, James, look, uh, a contact info is a call to action, right? I mean, you know, we can have a lot of goodness on our LinkedIn profiles. You know, we've got, you know, a powerful, compelling headline. We've got, you know, a really detailed career summary statement. And our visitors take all of that in, but they don't have a way to reach out to us. Uh, Giving them that call to action, phone and email, in addition to certainly the ability to send you a message if they are a connection, But sometimes a lot of our visitors are not connections, so they don't have the ability to send us a message uh, without paying for it. Yeah. So giving them that phone and email gives them a chance to really react to your call to action. I love it. I love it. Chuki, this has been fantastic. You've shared five really actionable ways that people can optimize their LinkedIn profile. Uh, Is is there anything else that you'd like to share before I let you go today? Absolutely. So, uh, James, this is uh, hot off the presses. Uh, We have uh, a new functionality, LinkedIn. Uh, It's called Point Drive. Uh, This gives B2B marketers the ability to create a microsite, generate a microsite link, and put that link in their LinkedIn profiles, and they can track buying signals. So just fairly high level uh, imagine in your contact info having a link to this microsite. Uh, when a visitor hits that link to the microsite, you can present that visitor with even more rich media content. Um, you can give them uh, a little bit more detail about your value proposition, your service, your product, and then you track how they're interacting with that information. So how much time they spend, um, are they forwarding that information on to their colleagues? It tracks all of this for you in a nice dashboard. Um, it is part of a, a premium LinkedIn package, but you know, certainly something that a lot of B2B marketers have been calling us about and really inquiring about. So I wanted to share that with your group. Yeah, yeah, that would be, that, that's fantastic. I appreciate you sharing that, Chuki. Uh, if there's somebody listening, they want to connect with you deeper on this stuff, what's the best way for them to get in contact with you? Yeah, just reach out to me through LinkedIn, uh, but I can also give uh, to follow you know, my recommendation here and take my own vitamins. Uh, I will... Uh, uh, leave you with my number it's uh my direct office line it's 312-999-4764 or they are welcome to email me at c o b o at linkedin.com and that's o b i y o is that correct correct love it awesome cheeky well thank you so much for your time today this has been fantastic i really appreciate it james thank you to ensure that you never miss an episode of the b2b growth show Subscribe to the show on iTunes or your favorite podcast player. This guarantees that every episode will get delivered directly to your device. If you or someone you know would be an incredible guest for the B2B Growth Show, email me at jonathan at sweetfishmedia.com. Let us know. We love connecting with B2B executives, and we love sharing their wisdom and perspective with our audience. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.